Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Old Testament in 88 days. We're on day 54 and today we'll be finishing up Job, reading chapters 33 through 42. So, it's been a lot of back and forth between Job's friends and then this younger guy came, a fourth friend, and he's uh, talking now. And um, then we're finally going to get to God. He's going to speak after a little bit here. So, Job 33. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of Elohim hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me. Stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasions against me, he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks, he marketh all my paths. Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that Elohim is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For Elohim speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. That he may withdraw from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto a man his uprightness, then is he gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's, he shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto Elohim, and he will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh Elohim oftentimes with men to bring his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, uh, Job 34. Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasted meat. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and Elohim hath taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right, my wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water? which goeth in a company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with men, wicked men. For he hath said, It profiteth a man nothing that he should delight himself with Elohim. Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding, far be it from Elohim that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the cause of man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely Elohim will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Who hath given him charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? He set his heart upon man. He gathered unto himself his spirit and his breath. All flesh shall perish together, and all man shall turn again to dust. If now thou hast understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. 
Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, now regardeth the rich more than the poor? They are the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves, for he will not lay upon man more right than that he should enter into judgment with Elohim. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number, and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they have turned back from him, and would not consider any of his ways. So that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face unto them, can behold them? Whether it be done against a nation, or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared, surely it is meet to be said unto Elohim, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not teach thou me, if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to thy mind? He will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I. Therefore speak what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Job hath spoken without knowledge, and his words without, were without wisdom. My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he addeth rebellion unto his sin, he clappeth his hands among us, and multiplieth his words against Elohim. Job 35 Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidst my righteousness is more than Elohim's? For thou saidst, What advantage will it be unto thee, and what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens, and see, behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what dost thou against him? Or, if thy transgression be multiplied, what dost thou unto him? Thou be righteous, what givest thou him, or what receiveth he of thine hand? Thy wickedness may hurt man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man, by reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make oppressed to cry. They cry out to, by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, Where is Elohim my maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven? There is the, There they cry, but none giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely Elohim will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he hath visited his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain, he multiplieth words without knowledge. Job 36 Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have spoken yet to speak, that I have yet to speak on Elohim's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my word shall not be false, he that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, Elohim is mighty, and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters, and holden in cords of affliction, and he switch sheweth them their work, and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline, and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath, they cry not when he bindeth them, they die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth their ears in oppression. Even so would he have removed the out of the strait into a broad place, where there is no straightness, and that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled 
the judgment of the wicked, judgment and justice take hold on thee. Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take thee away with his stroke, and then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Will he esteem thy riches? No, not gold, nor the forces of strength. Desire not the night when people are cut off from their place. Take heed and regard not iniquity, for this hast thou chosen rather than affliction. Behold, Elohim exalted by his power, who teacheth like him? Who hath enjoined him of his way? Or who can say thou hast wrought iniquity? Remember that thou magnify his work which men behold. Every man may see it, man may behold it afar off. Behold, Elohim is great, and we know him not, neither can the number of his years be searched out. For he maketh small the drops of water, they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. Also can any understand the spreadings of the clouds and the noise of his tabernacle? Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it, and covereth the bottom of the sea. For by them judgeth he the poor, the people he giveth meat in abundance. With clouds he covereth the light, and commandeth it not to shine by the cloud that cometh betwixt. The noise thereof seareth concerning it, the cattle also concerning the vapor. Job 37 at this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. Elohim thundereth marvelously with his voice, great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend, for he saith to the snow, be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into the dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of Elohim frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud, and is turned round about his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world and the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of Elohim. Dost thou know when Elohim disposed them, and caused the light of his cloud to shine? Dost thou know the balances of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge? How thy garments are warm when he quieteth the earth with the south wind. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten, molten looking glass? Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reasons of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speak, surely he will, shall be swallowed up. And now men shall... Uh, men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of the north, with Elohim his terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment, and in plenty of justice he will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. Job 38 Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind, and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it brake forth as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and brake up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall, they pr shall thy proud waves be stayed? Hast thou commanded the morning? since thy days, and caused the dayspring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. From the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. 
Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare, if thou knowest at all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? That thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, that thou shouldest know the paths to the house thereof. Knowest thou it, because thou wast then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided a watercourse for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness whereon there is no man, to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth? Hath the rain a father, or who hath begotten the drops of dew, out of whose womb came the ice and, and the hoary frost of heaven? Who hath gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guard Articurus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set dominion thereof in the earth? Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds, that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightnings, that they may go, and say unto thee, Here we are? Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts, or hath given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in wisdom, or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clods heave, cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion, or fill the appetite of the long, young lions? When they couch in their dens, and abide in the covert to lie in wait? Who provideth for the raven his food? When his young ones cry unto Elohim, they wander for lack of meat. Job 39 Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth, or canst thou mark when the hens do kite and calve? Canst thou number the months that they fulfill, or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves and bring forth their young ones, they can't cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. Who hath sent out the wild ass free? Or who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings. He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. The range of the mountains in his pasture, and he searcheth after every green thing. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great, or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed to gather it into thy barn? Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto this ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in the dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them? She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear, because Elohim hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted unto her understanding. What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear, and is not affrighted, neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believeth he that it is the sound of a trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, Ha, ha, and smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Doth the hawk fly? by thy wisdom, and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command, and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, and the strong place. From thence she seeketh their prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there she is. Job 40 
Moreover, Yahweh answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth Elohim let him answer. Then Job answered Yahweh and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered Yahweh unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like Elohim, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass, his bones are like bars of iron. He is chief of the ways of Elohim, he that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the cover of the reed and fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadow, and the willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasten not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes, his nose pierceth it through snares. Job 41 Canst thou drop out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together, they cannot be sundered. By his knee scenes a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and flame goeth out of his mouth. His neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together, they are firm in themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When they, he raised up himself, the mighty are afraid, by reason of breakings they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the hybrid ground. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee, sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble, he laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him, he spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot, he maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him, one would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all things, he is king over all the children of pride. Job 42 Then Job answered Yahweh and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that thou no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not? 
things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard by thee, heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so, that after Yahweh had spoken these words unto Job, Yahweh said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me that thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken of me, the thing which is right like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, went and did according as Yahweh commanded them. Yahweh also accepted Job. And Yahweh turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also Yahweh gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him all over the evil that Yahweh had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So Yahweh blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, the name of the third Keren Hapuk. And in all the land were no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Wow. That's the end of Job. So there's a lot of different messages in this um, book of Job. So many, actually. Um, but one thing's for certain that we must trust in God, no matter what the circumstance is, and not just be quick to judge the circumstance and or feel sorry for ourself and or blame others or God for our circumstances. In all things, even says multiple times in the Bible at different places, in all things give thanks, in all situations give thanks, and for everything give thanks to God. And um, also that He is always with us, no matter what. And um, you know, another verse, he will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter what we're going through. And so, there's, like I said, there's tons of lessons in this book of Job, but that's that's uh, some of the ones that stand out to me. Just always, no matter what, it may be hard, but always trust in, in God, no matter what you're going through. And, and uh, like I always said at the end of every video, you know, have faith in him, have trust in him, and wait upon him, which is always the hardest, I think. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And, as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care, God bless, and God willingly, we will start uh, Psalms tomorrow. The start of Psalms. So, thanks again, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.